All right, here we go. Meep, meep. That meep, meep indicates that we are going live. All right, what I wanted to do is um, just, I was, I was looking into uh, some of the emoticons. I know a lot of subscribers will do their own emoticons, and I know a lot of people don't actually know how to create their own. So let's say you wanted to put your own face or something uh, <clears throat> and create different, uh, emotions or you know different faces and then turn them into emoticons for your subscribers if you're a twitch partner uh, you can actually upload your own um, but what I'm showing you here on this page is the uh, uh, basically the dimensions that your image needs to be because uh, twitch uses three different uh, emoticon sizes and you can see that they're all incremental 28 pixels by 28 pixels uh, 56 by 56 and then 112 by 112. In order to achieve that, um, it's generally a good idea to start with a high resolution image um, because as they say here, you don't really want to feather your borders and such like that. Um, but I'm going to show you how to do this with uh, say a high resolution image. If you don't know how to cut out a photo, you can visit my YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com forward slash user forward slash jerokayadar. Um, I've got a, a quick tutorial on how to do cutouts there. I've got some other videos. Um, but I, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to take an image I already cut out and I'll uh, transition the scene here. Um, but this, I just kind of wanted to show you this page, uh, you know, to give you an idea of what we're doing here. You're going to title your emoticon and everything. I am not a Twitch partner. I'm just showing you how to uh, how to do this. As you'll see, I transition to the top left corner of your screen, so you can still see me. Uh, I've already opened up GIMP. I believe we're using GIMP 2.8. Um, and what I have here is a, is an image that is uh, 1268 by 1902 pixels. It's basically uh, from, I think, one of the tutorials I did this in, uh, I believe. This is when I was a soldier getting ready for my second deployment. Um, but what I'm doing with this photo here is before I create a new image, and you can you can just file open. Um, you could do file open uh, for your for your image that you want to use, um, or you can just drag and drop it from a folder. I'm not entirely sure how much of the the capture if it'll capture these sub menus or not. If not, I'll change the the way I capture the video from GIMP here. Um, but what I'm going to do is just basically I'm going to take my face here, zoom in a little bit, and we're going to just, you know, say we're making an emoticon out of this. As you can see, it's slightly feathered around the edges. Uh, it's already got a drop shadow and everything. That's None of that is necessary for an emoticon. But I'm just going to uh, create a rough cutout of just the head. So first I'm going to take a uh, select an area like this here. And then I'm going to come over here, right click, or I'm just going to say create new layer. And then in your layer, you want to make sure that you have transparency set. Uh, you can create the layer at the same size for now. That's fine. So we're just going to go ahead and do that. Create a new layer and make sure you have that layer selected. It'll be highlighted in black if you have the dark theme or it'll be uh, just like a gray, I believe, with the white, uh, the default theme. Um, what you're going to do is just you can use your keyboard shortcuts and use control C to copy or we're just going to go to edit. Uh, copy. We're not even going to cut it out. That's fine. And then we're going to say Control V. Actually, let's just do uh, paste into edit, paste as uh, new layer. So I guess we didn't really need to create that layer. Um, but if we hide the other layers, okay, we didn't actually copy anything because. <laughs> All right. So disregard that. I'm going to Control Z. Just undo. Uh, the paste and undo the new layer. Uh, what we're going to do instead is edit and cut. So that's Control X or uh, just edit cut. Okay, and don't worry, we're not going to save this here. And then we're going to go back up here, edit, paste as new layer. And there you have it. Um, what we could have done is pasted it as a new image, but instead of doing that, we now have a new layer called clipboard uh, with this on it. 
before we create our new image we're just going to come in here and sharpen it up a little bit by cutting out we're going to cut out the collar and the neck and just do the face here so you can get real close if you want I'm just going to get about this close and I'm just going to come in here with a free select tool you can also use your pass tool for more precision if you'd like uh, I'm just doing this for tutorial purposes so I'm not going to make my lines extremely sharp I'm going to go ahead and capture the chin shadow here and that's your preference whether you'd like to do that or not just try to stay about one pixel inside any outline that you want to capture um, and you can always move uh, you can hit the backspace key if you if you want to delete a node the last node that you place down okay and that's gonna be good there so I'm just gonna come down uh, over here and just below the dotted line I'm going to move my screen over, go just outside, just outside, and then connect this dot because we're getting rid of this area here. We'll just hit the delete key to get rid of that. Uh, for you Mac users, you can use your edit menu and then go down to clear. Um, and then I'm going to select none, which is control shift A, or just edit uh, select and then none. And now you can see we still got the drop shadow in there. Uh, that's okay. That could be part of our uh, emoticon if we want to but for twitch and I'm gonna bring you back just real quick to this other to, to this other screen here you can see that uh, there's no drop shadow on this face and a matter of fact they actually talk about um, if we scroll down here a little bit <clears throat> let me find it please submit your emoticon with a fully transparent background uh, it's not to say that you can't put a drop shadow, but it's not necessarily going to show up on the darker backgrounds. Uh, they also mentioned possibly using an off-white color, which is hexadecimal code F1 three times uh, around the edge if you feel like your image is too blurry. We've got a high-resolution image, so we're not concerned with this. But what we are going to do is, um, let me bring it back into GIMP here. What we are going to do is take this drop shadow out and we're going to do it manually and I'm actually going to zoom in quite a bit what I want to do is I don't want to go inside the skin lines here I want to stay within just the uh, just the shadow areas it's not going to be perfect for this tutorial again because I'm not uh, actually using this but also keep in mind you don't have to make yours completely perfect either because um, you're going to be shrinking the resolution of this image down to 112 pixels at the at the largest size. So, at that size, none of this is really going to uh, show up anyway. Once you cut this out, you know your edges will still look pretty decent. So I'm just going to really quick do this uh, for the sake of keeping this tutorial fairly short. Uh, and it is a live stream, so it'll still be available on video. Uh, as a video on YouTube, Twitch, and Stream.me. Uh, Twitch and Stream.me do not save videos indefinitely. Um, I believe it's a couple weeks and then they uh, clear them out to save space. So uh, just keep that in mind. If you, if you are a live streamer, outstanding. Um, if you intend to have your videos around for a while, just make sure that uh, you either save the video separately, like record your streams, or you download them and edit them as you see fit, and then upload them on a video site such as YouTube, or uh, there are some other options for those of you who are into cryptocurrencies like dvideo.com uh, and uh, I think Vimeo. Not Vimeo. Anyway, any video site. Uh, so as you can see, I'm basically I'm outlining the face really, uh, staying just inside the drop shadow. I'm going to outline the entire face. And let me show you how we're going to. Oops, just connect that. I'm going to zoom back out and I'm going to show you how we um, actually connect the uh, invert the selection to delete that. So what we're going to do is select invert. That's also Control I on your keyboard as a shortcut, and you can see the excuse me, selection is now inverted and we've got a dashed line outside of the image as well as around the face. Hit the delete key. Mac users can use edit clear. Um, 
and then we're going to control shift A to select none. Now you can see that we still have our clipboard layer pasted and our bottom layer is now missing a head. Uh, that's okay, we are not saving this. Just make sure you do not save this image if you didn't mean to cut the head off. Uh, I also have this saved as a GIMP file somewhere else, so uh, if you do make mistakes, just try to save your work frequently. Um, unless you're editing another work, uh, then you don't really want to save it. Now that we have this as a layer, this is essentially our emoticon. And once again, just for reference purposes, go ahead and take a look at that image. And I'm going to bring back the other one on the uh, browser page. So you can see it essentially looks the same. Obviously, it's a different face, and I'm looking down in the photo, uh, but it's essentially the same idea. It looks like it can be an emoticon. Now, in order to get this to become an emoticon, what we're going to do is we're going to File New, or you can Control N, and you're going to get your new image template. I'm hoping you can see this in OBS. If not, it's File New, and then you're just going to change your width and your height to 112. That's 112 pixels, or 112. Uh, and then click advanced options, fill with transparency, and select OK. And you'll see we have a new image here. You can hit the one key to zoom it to 100% or just control and mouse wheel to zoom it. Uh, you can also go to image zoom. Uh, I'm sorry, not image zoom. It is... Uh, da, 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 da. I have not used the window to zoom in a long time, so forgive me for not remembering where the oh, view view zoom okay uh, you can select your zoom from the view menu at the top uh, if the control mouse wheel uh, if you don't have a mouse wheel on your mouse that's the way to do that all right now as you can see these two tabs up here we're gonna go back to our first tab this is full screen mode on GIMP if you're using an older version of GIMP you'll have two separate windows open uh, unless you're full screen then you should also have tabs we're going to take this layer right here, and I'm going to hold down my mouse on it and drag it into the new image. Let go. Oh, I don't think it's going to let me do that with uh, GIMP running. All right. Um, so here's, here's another way to do that. We're going to take this uh, image here. We're going to right click. Or actually, here's what we'll do. We'll go to Edit, Copy, and then we'll click on our new image edit, paste as, new layer, there it is. So uh, if you cannot drag and drag, you should be able to. I think it's because I'm running um, uh, the streaming software. You should be able to drag one la <coughs> a layer from one image into another image. If you can't, you can always just copy it and then paste it as a new layer. And as you can see, it is absolutely huge. I'm going to zoom out so you can see the lines. It's way bigger than our image. So what we're going to do, there's a couple ways to scale this. Uh, we can use our scale tool and then lock the proportions and bring it into the frame. Or we can go to layer and, and we can choose scale layer that way and just fill out the box. I prefer to use the scale tool because it is a bit more of a visual tool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to guides in my toolbox and I'm just going to select no guides. Make sure that your uh, anchor is selected, that it is linked right here in your scale window. And then you can just take your mouse and kind of bring down the size so it fits in the window. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it right to the edge of the window there. Um, and then we can center it, or at least somewhat center it, using the uh, circle in the center of the image there. I'm just going to bring it over a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect because I'll show you the alignment tool in a moment. And then just click the scale button, and there you have a... Uh, decent size emoticon uh, at 112 and now remember it did say uh, that there are three different sizes that they use and let me just bring that oh I was on the wrong window wasn't I I apologize for that if you did not see that whole GIMP thing um, I apologize um, basically what I did is took this and I went edit copy or you can control C um, or you can just drag the layer into the new window. Uh, and then I just pasted the layer as a new window, or I pasted what I had copied here. Make sure the layer is selected if you're copying. And then I just pasted it as a new layer in here. And I apologize if you missed that. I, I hope I didn't have the wrong scene open. 
Um, but again, I am gonna bring I am gonna bring this scene up one more time here, uh, just to show you that we need 112 by 112, and then 56 by 56, and 28 by 28, which that's basic computer math there anyway. Um, so again, back into our GIMP screen. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, you can see that our image is relatively, uh, it fits relatively well within the borders, uh, and we have a transparent background. Uh, another way to make sure that all of your layers are transparent is they will not be in bold font. If you see bold font for background, clipboard, any of your layers over here, just right click and say add alpha channel uh, to make sure that they are transparent. Okay, so enough about that let's get on with the next step I'm gonna use my alignment tool here I'm just gonna click on this layer and then in my tool options I'm going to center uh, horizontally and then I'm gonna center vertically and that is a dead center um, placement for our image there and as you can see we we got rid of the drop shadow at least for the most part except for a little bit on the neck here um, and that was intentional so now that you have that click on your background layer I'm sorry, click on your, uh, right click on your clipboard layer and then choose layer to image size. Another way to do that is from your layer menu and then layer to image size. Uh, make sure that layer is selected and you'll see that we've got uh, the layer at the image size. If you want to get rid of these little squares here, you can just hit the M key to change to a move tool or you can just change to any tool really, but uh, it's just one quick way to do it. And, and there you can see we actually have our emoticon created. Uh, at this point, you do want to save this image. And before you do that, I recommend closing out your other image, but then discard the changes. Uh, if it says, would you like to save it, just say discard changes. And, uh, and that will close that one. And unfortunately, it looks like the stream is not picking up any um, modals or pop-up menus. So I will, next time, use a different capture method for GIMP. Um, but as I'm recording my voice as well, you can actually go through and uh, use the menu items as I'm stating. I'll try to give a couple options as far as shortcut keys, um, right-clicking, and using the menus where applicable. Okay, so now that we have our uh, emoticon placed and centered, the way we'd like it. Now you want to save this image. You can go to File, Save As, or you can hit Shift Control S. And you're going to get a, a window that pops up. I know you can't see it. It's going to be a .xcf file. I'm just going to call it uh, Emoticon 1. You can call it whatever you'd like. Choose the folder you'd like to save it into. Uh, I'm going to save this in my GIMP folder here. And then just save that. After you save it, you have to export it uh, to a .png, which is a portable network's graphic image. And English, I'm telling you, the more I speak, the worse I am. <laughs> Go ahead and choose Export As. You choose the folder that you want to save it to. Mine's, uh, it should already be set in the same folder that you saved your, your GIMP template. So um, make sure it says .png at the end. You can type it in, or you can select File Type uh, by extension at the bottom. Uh, name it what you like and click on the export button another window will pop up just click export again all those default settings are fine um, so now we have a 112 version of this uh, image the next thing that we need to do as you can tell from the uh, that web page again this is from twitch so uh, make sure that your next size is 56 by 56 and then we'll need one 28 by 28 the reason we started at the largest size is to maintain the resolution. It's always easier to scale down and keep uh, your image proportions versus scaling up because then you run into pixelation and stuff. So always start with your largest size. The next thing we're going to do is actually go to our image menu uh, and we can scale image that way or we can again use the tool. Just click in the box, make sure that the anchor is uh, locked and then just type in 56 tab or just type in 56 for the height and for the width and then click scale um, ooh, I'm sorry we did need to scale the image so disregard that control 
Let's see. Um, I got sidetracked. Go to image, scale image. This is different because we were trying to scale the layer before. Uh, we're going to scale the image from 112 all the way down to 56 by 56. And then just click scale. And you can see that the image shrunk, shrank. And I apologize for, and if you zoom in, you can see it's a lot more pixelated. That's why you do not scale up. Again, I apologize for not capturing the modal or the pop-up dialog boxes within GIMP. I will fix that for the next stream. Uh, unfortunately, it would be too time consuming to do that right now. Uh, so now that we have it at 56, we're actually going to save. Um, I'm choosing not to save the file. If I did, I would save it as a different size. Uh, right now, we're just going to export as, and we're going to. I'm going to call this one Emoticon 2. Uh, you can name it Emoticon 56 or something that makes sense to you. Uh, and then we're going to do the same thing. Image, scale image, and we're going to say 28 by 28 this time. And then scale. And you can see I got much, much smaller. If I hit the one key to go out to 100%, that's literally actual size of the emoticon. And you can still see some details in there. If we were to make this background white, I'm just going to make the background white really quick just to give you an idea what it'll look like on a white background. Okay. Uh, or we can make it black. And you can see what it'll look like on a black background, uh, mostly for like the dark theme. And it's not going to be completely black in the uh, dark mode. It'll be more of like a, uh, a muted black. But also in our thumbnail up here at the top right, or top left, excuse me, you can see the uh, it is pixelated because this is showing roughly a 112 size here. So uh, let me just get rid of the background. I'll just hide it. Um, actually, I'll just undo the, there we go. And then we're going to have file export as, and then I'm going to call this one three because this is our third size down. Uh, you can call it 28 if you want. Uh, make sure the name makes sense to you. Um, and then I'm going to, so you can see the thumbnail up here. I'm going to undo every single resize. Uh, and here at the bottom, or here at the top, in your in your title bar for your program, you should be able to see the full size of the image. Mine says 112 by 112. And if you look at our thumbnail now, this is pretty much exactly what it'll look like. We are zoomed into 100%. So there you have it. You have yourself a brand new em emoticon. The next step would be to upload it to your emoticons in your partner settings on Twitch. I am not a partner, so I will not be showing you that step. If one day I do make partner, I will. Um, but I hope you have enjoyed the stream and at least learned something about creating emoticons. It really is that easy. All you need is your dimensions. Um, and I would actually go one step further and say, if you're going to create like a uh, icon for your web page, uh, you know how you'll see the little icon next to the name? That's called a favicon. And it's saved as favicon, F-A-V-I-C-O-N dot I-C-O. Um, let me see if I can show you an example real quick. Yeah, here you go, Twitch. Um, it's going to be really hard to tell in the screen, but in the top left corner, you can see the little Twitch logo next to Twitch subscriber emoticon guy for partners. Uh, anywhere you go on the Twitch website, you will see that little icon there. That's called a favicon, and those are generally either 32 by 32 pixels or 16 by 16 pixels. Those are created exactly the same way, except when you save it, you save it as an ICO file, .ICO. And generally, they are named favicon .ico, And that's exactly the same process as an emoticon. So that does it for that. Um, I guess I will see you guys in the next stream. We'll probably be playing some Crash Royale later on in the day. Uh, we intend to play some ELRP later on as well. And uh, I, I will do more game tutorials. If you have any particular requests, you can comment on this video on any of the streams it's on, on any channel, uh, either YouTube, or you can get in touch with me on Twitch. And, uh, you know, again, I'm not sure if I switch scenes. Uh, I feel like, yeah, I, I did switch scenes. Okay. I forgot I was showing you the uh, icon that you probably couldn't see in the stream. 
Uh, but again, there you go. There's your final result. There's the um, there's the icon up here uh, in the uh, thumbnail, and then the uh, the emoticon. So everything. Hey, Mystic, how's it going? Just showing uh, just showing how to create some emoticons uh, for Twitch. Those who are Twitch partners. Uh, I see a lot of custom emoticons and I was just showing everybody how to make one. This video will also be available on YouTube. Um, but uh, here, let me bring this screen back up. But there's also, I was looking at the uh, the page to try and figure out how to upload them and I didn't realize you actually had to be a partner uh, to do so. So... Uh, but either way, it's it's useful information. You create the favicons and the emoticons all the same way. Uh, you can you can cut out your own images, make your own expressions. Um, it's easier to do with a solid background if you're trying to cut out your face. Um, but you can you can cut your face out of any image. Uh, I believe I should have a couple videos on YouTube about how to do that. Uh, I can also do another live tutorial on. Uh, the entire process as far as um, photo editing or um, logo creation, any pretty much anything like GIMP, uh, text, stuff like that. Um, most of my overlays I create, uh, I actually created this font as well that you're seeing on this stream right now. Uh, there's a lot of different creative ways to, to kind of put your own uh, add your own unique touch to a stream or to an image but there you have it uh, once again I'll bring up this this screen <laughs> yeah I you know I studied ITT tech for four years I didn't even study graphics uh, I studied software engineering but as I was building my own websites and such I, I really got into the graphic side of it and then just started messing around with GIMP because it's free software and I mean, there's plenty of tutorials out there. I'm certainly not the, uh, not, not, you know, like a guru or, <laughs> but, um, yeah. So I just figured I'd share that. Uh, I'm actually, it's going to be a short stream just because I wanted to just post that basically. This video will also be available on each of these streams, um, and on YouTube pretty much indefinitely. So, uh, I will, let me go ahead and type in my, let me edit this text. I gotta find out where there it is. I'm gonna edit this text real quick and put up my stream information. The uh, and I guess it's gonna do that live. Uh, I don't know if it's www. I think you can just do youtube.com user and then my name Gerald Kayadar, or you can go to uh, stream me slash tunnel rat three two seven and it's the same for twitch uh tunnel rat three two seven and that will be and most of you will know uh I most of you are from Twitch anyway but uh th those are my channels there if you want to go to YouTube you can subscribe to that channel I have a couple different YouTube channels this one I primarily use for GIMP I've also streamed a couple times there with some games. Uh, we can probably do some Clash. I am going to need a small break because I have been fiddling around with some stuff on here. I'm going to give my eyes a little break. And uh, what I can do is um, maybe maybe give me about 20 minutes. I'm going to take a refresher. Uh, and then I'll come back and I'll, I'll jump on Clash. And we'll see. I, I kind of lost some trophies earlier today so uh <laughs> yeah but uh we can get those back play around with some different decks and stuff uh give me about 20 minutes though i'll cut this stream short and then um we can do maybe an hour or two of some clash so i'll be back thanks for stopping by mystic and i'll see you in a little bit here all right